The Donate Life Flow Committee is looking forward to welcoming you to Pasadena to decorate the image of your loved one. A floor graph is a very special opportunity and very few families nationwide are afforded the chance to create this beautiful lifelike portrait of their loved one every year. Now coming to Pasadena can be a scary thing because you've never done this before. It'll bring up all sorts of memories during the holiday season. We're here to receive you, to welcome you, and to guide you through this process. This video will also help to guide you and prepare you for that journey. I will introduce you to the materials that are used to create these portraits. Also, we'll introduce you to the techniques that are used to take these materials and apply them to the canvas. We look forward to welcoming you. Our volunteers will guide you through the process and we look forward to seeing you soon. For people who do not know what a floor graph is, this is a floor graph that was done previously. It is a photograph of a loved one who will be honored in the Rose Parade. And for the purposes of the Rose Parade, everything has to be covered with seeds or flowers. So there are specific products that we use, and it's almost like a sand art or a paint by numbers technique. Sometimes people think that they should be putting product on in the first five minutes. The purpose of penciling is that it really gives you time to define the lines that you want to stand out. You're going to need to have lip lines. You're going to need to have nostrils. You're going to have to have certain areas on the face that you don't want to disappear. The problem if you do all of the skin without drawing some of the pencil lines is sometimes you miss some of those very critical areas. And it helps you define it so that ultimately you have a floor graph that really depicts the person that you want to depict. So ultimately when you look at a floor graph, typically the first thing that you start with is the skin. You start with the T of the forehead and the face unless there's a hat. So you'll start with the lightest areas. You'll work your way from the inside out, from the top, um, from the center outward. It's really important that as you go from one area to another that you have some shading just to distinguish the two different areas. So in that case, you would take a little bit in your hand. For instance, if I took a little L2 and I had that in my hand and I wanted to add a little bit of L3 before I got into uh, an entire area, I could just sprinkle it in my hand, mix it up, and then use that to sprinkle onto the glue and then gradually get darker and darker. We happen to like using sometimes a cinnamon or one of the darker colors to use the lines for the nose or maybe the creases in the eyes or maybe some of the smile lines um, or perhaps a dimple. So you don't want to lose any of the detail, but at this point you haven't added any of the colors. You've really just worked on the skin itself. When you're doing the lips, you would probably use both kinds of pink, and sometimes you would use a little bit of brown. If it's a woman, then you would have probably a pinkier pink, and if it's a man, you'd have the lighter pinks and maybe some of the natural skin tones mixed in with it. While the lips are drying, then maybe I'm going back and starting the eyes. The eyes and the mouth have to be done in stages. It's really important that you let each area dry at least somewhat before you add a new product or all of the colors begin to look muddy. When we're doing the eyes, we really need to think about stages in that too. For some people, you can really see the crease of their eye and that's an important detail that you'd want to add. We tend to use the cinnamon because it's dark enough and yet light enough. Then we'll go and we'll do the eyeliner. Even a man does have some kind of darker area with the eyelashes. Um, so it would be very, very fine if you were doing someone who is very fair or a man that doesn't have the long eyelashes. And then if it's a fair person, then I would do the curve around the iris and then let that dry. I would go to the, do the hair and then I would come back and I would do the color of the iris. Then I would go back and do some hair. I would come back and do the black of the pupil. And as I'm doing the teeth, that's also when I would do the whites of the eyes and I would do the sparkle in the eye. 
at the very end. Now, of course, the climax for anyone is when the portrait is in the parade. And whether the family is watching on television hoping to see their loved one's portrait or most often sitting in the grandstands watching their loved one's portrait go by, that is the moment that they can cherish and remember forever that on that day, at that moment, their loved one inspired the world to donate life.